Hi, I'm Daisy Ridley, and I play Annette and produced Magpie. Hi, I'm Matilda Lutz, and I play Alicia Romano. Hi, I'm Shazad Latif, and I play Ben. I'm Kate Solomon, and I'm one of the producers. I'm Tom Bateman, and I'm the writer. Hi, I'm Sam Yates. I'm the director of Magpie, and um, Magpie is a neo-noir with some thriller elements about a married couple, um, Annette and Ben, whose daughter uh, gets a part in a movie, and Ben chaperones her to that movie, and when he's there, he starts uh, an affair with the lead actor of that movie, and at home, Annette... Um, starts to suspect something's going on in the movies about what she does to uh what she does about that so for the ending um of this film i knew it was something i wanted to build towards and uh for me a huge theme of this film that i wanted to try and capture was the idea of perception what what we believe very quickly to be the reality uh, as is presented towards us on micro levels with that characters and themes in the film and storyline and just to kind of start to subvert that so I knew that that was something I needed to build towards um, however it was something that slowly sort of came about the specificity of how that happened but in terms of structuring the end the only way I could get to that point is to thread it through from the beginning so it was once I had worked out that that's where I was going to go with the ending, I kind of had to sort of work my way back through and, and, and make sure that I'd uh, constructed that along the way. Um, well, I initially had the idea of the film. Oh. Yes. And then we were, so we were very much, Tom was doing the writing and we were doing lots of the discussing along the way. Um, but what was great is we did sort of a feedback screening when we were through the edit and just wanted to get a feel for how other people were feeling about it. And the reaction was so good. So I'm very looking forward to seeing it with an audience tonight. I worked closely with our DOP, Laura Bellingham. We we wanted to uh, bring out kind of a number of things. So as you say, it's quite a sort of grounded image. We shot spherical, which is very clean, kind of clear image because we wanted to kind of put the kind of uh, emphasis of the story on the faces of the actors, particularly on a net. Um, so inspirations, there, there were many actually like the, films of John Demi were very, very inspirational. Uh, we looked at some Hanukkah movies. We looked at some Fincher movies uh, for those elements. We looked at some Kubrick, like Eyes Wide Shut and The Shining for other elements. So, you know, Tully was a big reference to the Annette's kind of, and the baby and the kind of the emotional kind of journey of that. So there were many, yeah. I mean, I remember when Tom, Tom he calls me and says, oh, I'm going to send you over something. And I'd read it speed read the script i was just a page turner i was lying down i'm yeah getting to the end and i just you know it was it was just so well constructed the whole the whole thing and i was also one of my good friends so i was just very impressed and jealous and <laughs> i was like damn how did he do that it's such a well-written piece <laughs> well what i liked about the project uh to start with was the script i really liked the script um, and then I was a big fan of Daisy and I just loved the idea that she was doing her own project and it's kind of like what I would love to do one day. So I just wanted to be around her and see her like, you know, be the lead and also a producer. And then I just love the fact that um, we completely change point of view on all of the three characters during the movie. Mm -hmm. And i that's what I loved about it. It really keeps the suspense uh, throughout the whole film. The house, there was a search for the house. We looked at loads of houses, mm -hmm. didn't yeah, we? we? Tons and tons and tons. Um, we knew we wanted something that was like big enough to hold, because we shot there for nearly two weeks. So mm -hmm. it really needed to encompass, we had to have a lot of space, mm. a lot of options, a lot of variety, had to be good in the day, had to be good at night. Mm. There's something interesting about like the wintry coldness of the, the glass as well, which we really, really liked. Mm. And you could obviously see through, we like mm. kind of idea that it kind of imprisons both of them to a degree, but especially Annette's character. It's kind of like a box that she's rattling around in. and though it's, it's large, they've achieved a dream, you know, a big, nice house in the countryside. In, in this sense, it's made her feel very small, you know, so it was dwarfing her and kind of, but yeah, the house was like out west, was it? Yes, yeah. near Reading. Near Reading, so. My brother's house, actually. I stayed at my brother's house. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Know, you did this because the fish is out and had a nice place to stay. <laughs> well, I was going to say, the house and really does represent another character. Like, yeah. she is so uh, isolated and claustrophobic in this house. And then 
her husband is going to this amazing romantic film set and there's space and joy and love and the house that should feel safe for Annette starts to be attacked by external forces. Mm. So everything is coming at her. Yeah, I mean, I wrote it. What's quite interesting is I did have an idea of, because uh, I was quite specific with the geography, where characters move, where one can be seen and not, uh, you know, observe and not be seen, to hear things but not see exactly what's going on. Um, but I think things were adapted to it a little mm. bit because obviously I didn't know the house. I didn't have a house in mind and we viewed quite a lot and some had problems. But amazingly with this house, I thought, wow, it kind of had everything. And those like the frosted glass yes. windows mm. that you sort of, which for me, I loved so yeah. much. Because again, with the perspective, this idea that you can, this sort of translucent, you can almost see through it. You can't quite, and even little elements of that to the house. I thought, my God, that's lending such a, an amazing theme to this piece just by being there, you know. And I think I was just going to say about that, you could also shoot from the outside in. Mm -hmm. And there's one particular scene where they're going up the stairs after mm -hmm. they've been at certain, it, it's Daisy, Shazad, and the little girl. And it's, you can see at the top, Daisy and the children go one way and Shazad goes the other. And it's just like, you couldn't do that in a normal house. Mm -hmm. And it's all from the outside, like you're seeing something you shouldn't. Yeah. And there's elements of that which have just helped a lot with, you know, the things we set up. Mm -hmm. My last question for you have to ask about Star Wars. Anything you can tell us. Chewbacca died. <laughs> <laughs> anything. Anything. Just say the word. The next Star Wars, Ray has kids. Anything. Anything. I could literally say anything. Yeah, you can say anything. Um, anything. I do not know. Hope she has kids. Um, I, I would say she probably doesn't have children, <laughs> seeing as she's a Jedi. Um, um, the, literally what I know is what was announced last year. I'm waiting to read a script. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. So well, you, I know it's sort of bits and bobs. You can't um, even tell us if carbon freezing is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I see a lot of freezing. I don't know. I know there's uh, introduction of new characters. I don't okay. know about previous characters. 